being prepared when they come out, having their life jackets, um, making sure the boat's in good operating order, making sure they have their flares, their lights are working, um, anything else it might have to do with just the safe operation of the boat itself. Children's life jackets are very specific. Uh, the under seven life jackets all come with special straps that go between their legs and stuff so they can't come out on them. And that's required uh, by the law now. Uh, in, there's a type 5 inflatable type life jacket that a lot of people carry now and they're only valid as life jackets if you're actually wearing it. And the thing is, you know, if you have an accident or your boat sinks out here, it's not like your car. You can't walk away from it. Uh, that's why wearing your life jacket, especially while you're underway, is extremely important. Leave a float plan somewhere with somebody. To at least tell somebody where you're going. You know, if you're going out fishing with your son, at least tell your wife that where you intend to go, so if it, for some reason you don't show up, we have at least a starting point to, uh, to look for you from. Cell phones don't always work out on the water. VHF radios, the Coast Guard, and our department monitor Channel 16, so you stand a good chance you know, of getting help if you need operate. You can have alcohol on your boat, unlike open in a motor vehicle, but the operator cannot be under the influence. Like more of our accidents are in the in the twilight or nighttime hours where people can't see as well, they're not familiar and they run into things that they probably wouldn't normally run into. Um, especially with alcohol, one of the first things that's affected are, is your vision with red and, and green. And of course all the navigational equipment is red and green and it just makes for bad decisions.